Welcome uh, everybody. My name is uh, Brecht. I'll be uh, giving a talk about my uh, project Rhinotype. It's a project I've been working on since uh, 2008. Uh, I was doing a PhD back then. I was using LaTeX and I was kind of getting uh, fed up with it uh, because of the difficult error messages uh, and uh, difficulty to create a custom style. Uh, so these were the, the reasons I started uh, working on Rhinotype. Uh, now finally, after all these years, it's uh, in a kind of beta stage, so uh, it's more or less uh, ready for general use. So what is it? Uh, if you're not familiar with, uh, of, if you're familiar with LaTeX, you will uh, know how it works. It's a patch document processor. Uh, as an input, it takes a uh, structured uh, document. This can be a restructured text or a markdown format. Uh, besides these uh, lightweight markup uh, formats, it also accepts, uh, or there's a very simple front end for docbook uh, files, uh, and there's also a commercial front end for uh, data files, which is an XML format that is used uh, by technical writers. Of course, besides the text uh, stored in the structured document, we can also provide images. Uh, Rhinotype accepts uh, PDF, PNG and JPEG images. If you want to uh, use other bitmaps, uh, you can do so if uh, below is installed. To uh, style the output, Rhinotype uh, depends on style definition in the form of a style sheet and a document template. Uh, these are both in uh, plain text files in any format. And besides these style definitions, we also require fonts. And uh, Rhinotype supports the most common uh, font formats, such as OpenType, TrueType, and the PostScript Type 1 format. So combining these inputs, uh, Rhinotype will uh, produce an output uh, that is a PDF uh, document. An example of its usage, uh, Rhinotype comes with a command line tool called Rhino. Um, we can pass a restructured text uh, document or the file name of a restructured text document to it and Rhino will uh, render it to a PDF file and uh, tell you about it like this. Uh, it also accepts common mark, uh, so common mark markdown uh, files. Uh, you can see that you can all, that Rhino also accepts some options. Uh, we'll go over them uh, later. Uh, for example, this one uh, renders a document to an A5 uh, paper format. It also presents uh, the progress using a pro progress bar so you can see how long uh, it will take to render the document. Besides uh, the command line tool, there is also a Sphinx builder. This is basically a drop-in replacement for the LaTeX builder, so you do not require to have a large uh, LaTeX installation to uh, produce PDFs from uh, Sphinx anymore. Um, you can use it like this, uh, using the Sphinx build command. You just pass the Rhino option, uh, the Rhino uh, Rhino to the builder option of uh, Sphinx build, along with the source directory and the output directory. I will also give an example of this uh, further on. As for installation, uh, Rhino type works on Python 3 only, Python 3.3 uh, and up to be precise. Uh, it's written in pure Python, so there's uh, no compilation uh, required, and it uh, depends on just a couple of uh, external packages. So there's uh, packages for uh, common mark or markdown um, support for restructured text that is handled by docutils, and then there's uh, pure PNG to parse PNG files, and besides that, uh, Rhinotype also packages uh, fonts separately, so these are also installed when you install Rhinotype. For the next release, I've uh, planned to also provide uh, standalone applications, so if you don't have Python installed, uh, you can just download a Windows installer or macOS uh, application bundle, uh, and that includes uh, Python along with uh, Rhinotype. So I want to give a small demo. Uh, this will be difficult. So in this uh, folder we have an example restructured text file. Uh, so with a document title, uh, section, another section, and then a subsection, uh, a paragraph here with a link in it, a small table, uh, another paragraph in the second section, and some uh, nested lists. So 
So we can just call Rhino, passing it the file name. And you can see it renders, uh, has to render a document twice, and this is to make sure that page references are uh, handled correctly. You know, with LaTeX, if you're familiar with LaTeX, you know you have to run it a couple of times. Uh, Rhino type handles this uh, transparently, and you mostly need uh, two runs uh, for a single document. If we run it again, it will only need a single pass because it writes a cache file storing uh, reference information. Uh, then for the uh, Sphinx Builder, I've, as an example, taken a, a relatively small um, Sphinx project from the simple JSON project. To make this build with uh, Rhino type, we have to make one small adjustment, and that's to add the uh, Sphinx uh, Builder module location to the ex list of extensions in uh, Consult.py. After this, we can uh, run Sphinx build like this, so passing it uh, the Rhino, Rhino as the builder option, the source directory, which is the current directory in this case, and an output directory. And then you get the standard uh, Sphinx uh, output along with uh, Rhino type's progress indicator, so this takes a little bit longer because it's a larger document. And again, uh, there's a second pass. And then I'll show, um, perhaps show the output of the first example. So this uh, Rhino by default uses the uh, article template, which uh, consists of a uh, title page. So we have a document title here that was uh, specified in this restructured text, docs, restructured text document, along with the date. Then we have a table of contents, uh, which is hyperlinked to the pages and also lists the pages, as you'd expect. And RhinoType also uh, generates uh, bookmarks in PDF, so we can jump to each section uh, uh, using that. So this is the content, uh, actual content of the document. Uh, you can see the two sections and the table. Then the output of the Sphinx Builder. So this uses the uh, book template by default which can be configured. Uh, so it's a title page, a larger table of contents, and then the actual content is a preface. You can also see the syntax highlighting for uh, code blocks. And this is the first chapter, so you can see that chapters start on new pages. And you might recognize the style of the document. It's uh, modeled after the uh, LaTeX output produced by uh, Sphinx. So that's a default uh, style sheet uh, shipped with uh, Rhino type. Uh, special in the book template is that it also generates an index. Uh, and this is not limited to uh, documents generated by Sphinx. It's also possible for uh, plain restructured text uh, documents. So it's uh, generated by Rhino type uh, itself. So let's go back to the presentation. So this is a summary of what I've shown. For the Sphinx, uh, Sphinx uh, Builder, it basically uses the LaTeX document uh, definition in Conf.py. So if you have LaTeX uh, output configured, uh, RhinoType will interpret uh, this configuration. You only have to add it to the list of extensions. <coughs> so suppose we want to change the style of the output. Uh, first, we need to know how uh, RhinoType handles this. In fact, it's very similar to CSS. Uh, where we select uh, the elements on the page using selectors, uh, and this is performed in the documentary. So at the front end, it creates a documentary, which is then uh, transformed to internal representation in Rhino type uh, to another documentary. And this one for, for this uh, sample document is displayed on the right. We have the two sections, each with a unique ID. 
the subsection, and you have the heading of the section, paragraph, table over here, and the list uh, over here. So once we have this, we can start selecting elements. Oh, let me first say that uh, paragraphs are also uh, included in this uh, document tree, and they also consist of a uh, tree to uh, represent nested uh, styling. So this uh, paragraph above with nested styling is represented in this uh, tree. So we have, uh, for example, the simple text without styling, and then there's a, this whole part is uh, emphasized, that's this one, and part of that is then strongly emphasized and so on. So this basically completes the, the tree shown uh, above uh, in the previous slide. <coughs> so we can match uh, elements based on their context. Uh, just like in CSS, um, each element in this tree is called a flowable, which is float onto a page and it can adapt to the width of the page or um, center itself uh, inside the available width. Uh, also, each element in this tree is a, a Python object, and so this is a class name. So these selectors are basically Python source code. Using operator overloading, we can uh, use this to construct uh, selectors. So for example, this one uh, represents a table cell, or, or represents a paragraph that's a direct child of a table cell by using the forward slash notation. So it selects uh, in this tree this uh, paragraph, for example. We can use the ellipsis uh, that's provided by Python to match uh, multiple levels of uh, elements. And this selects then all paragraphs that are part of a list. So as well as uh, this list item in the enumerated list, it also matches the paragraph in the bulleted list. We can also match uh, elements based on their style. Style is similar to uh, HTML's ID or class attributes. Um, for example, enumerated lists as you, can see, you can see they are the same object, uh, enumerated and bullet list are the same uh, flowable, but their style is uh, different. So this is enumerated and this is bulleted, and that's basically the, the enumerated is provided by styling it as an enumerated list. And it's selected like this using this uh, class method uh, called like, and then passing the style name. We can also match arbitrary attributes, uh, such as the level the section has a uh, level attribute specified that uh, specifies its level in the hierarchy. Uh, so this is a level two uh, section. So this is a level one section, as well as this one. So it's not selected, but this one is subsection is a level two uh, level two section, and we select the, select the heading below it. So it matches this this element. We can do some more complex things uh, like this, but I will not go into uh, detail about this. Uh, different from CSS is that uh, HinoType provides an extra level of uh, abstraction. So instead of specifying selectors uh, in a style sheet, we first map the selectors to style names. This, this has two advantages. They provide a descriptive name, uh, and second, these matchers that collect all these uh, selectors and map them to style names can be reused by multiple style sheets. So this saves uh, some work. Uh, we can also reuse style names in new style uh, in new selector definitions. So um, line block over here is defined like this, and if we combine them, we can uh, map that to a nested line block. Uh, there's some more examples uh, given, but they're pretty straightforward. Then onto the style sheet. As I said, it's a basic uh, text file in any format. So a style sheet starts with the style sheet uh, section. And we can give it a name. It also supports variables. So for example, we can define a variable sans typeface to uh, specify which font to use for all uh, sans serif typefaces in the document. So if we use this variable in style definitions uh, later on, uh, we only need to change this one. Same for color blue, which can later be uh, changed uh, easily. Then we define a default uh, paragraph style. So 
except for these two sections, all of the other sections, they should map to style names that are uh, defined in a matcher. Uh, except for this one, it uh, is not specified in the matcher, and that's why we have to specify that, uh, that it's a paragraph style. Uh, why? Because this is used as a base for other styles. Uh, so we can define some font uh, properties, uh, some settings regarding to a type setting, uh, text alignment, how to align the text horizontally. Then we have the body uh, style. This uh, is a style for a body paragraph, so most of the paragraphs in your document. Uh, it has the base style default as the base style, so it basically inherits all of these properties and adds the space above uh, property. And then we also have an in, uh, inline text uh, style for emphasized text and this sets uh, the fonts length to italic. Uh, we also support uh, inheritance in style sheets, so mostly you will use a style sheet that is shipped with a Rhino type or provided uh, separately. You can inherit from this simply by specifying the base, so Sphinx is a uh, style sheet that is included with uh, Rhino type and you can just uh, specify it by name. You can also specify others uh, by file name, for example. We can override a vari uh, variables. So, for example, we replace all sans uh, typefaces with droid sans in this style sheet. And we also uh, override emphasize text. This basic, this note that this um, inherits all properties of the emphasize text uh, or emphasis style of the base style sheet and additionally sets uh, the font color. So it text will be uh, italic and uh, receive a color. If you don't want to inherit the properties of the base uh, style sheet style, uh, you can set base to uh, default style as indicated here. So this will only change the font color and not uh, the font weight uh, as was done in the base style sheet, for example. Uh, how much time is left? Ten minutes, okay. So, because this is a little bit uh, slower with one hand. <coughs> so, suppose we want to change some uh, some of the properties of the uh, restructured text document uh, I've shown before. Um, now, how do we find out which style uh, definitions we have to change? For this, I not type. I uh, need to change back. Every time uh, I not type renders a document, it also generates a style log, and this is basically basically a representation of the document as it is rendered. For each page, it will render. Uh, it will list the three of the elements that have been rendered to the page. So let's go to page three where the actual content is. And there we can find the first section and we can see that this maps to the chapter uh, style. For the ch uh, section heading, it maps to the heading level one style. So we can uh, start and uh, change this in the style, sh style sheet. In case heading level one was not uh, specified in the style sheet, it would uh, move on Put, a, put an X here and it move on, would move on to the next uh, style in the list. So we can do this for the example document. So here we specified uh, some name description and which uh, base uh, style sheet to use. We also override a, a variable which changes the font. And finally we change the heading level uh, <coughs> style. So it also inherits from the base style, but we change some properties such as font size, font weight, font color, and also change the format of the number uh, preceding the section title. And similar for level two, uh, we, do, uh, we make similar changes. So the result of uh, this, ah yeah, to make it used, uh, uh, custom style sheet, we can specify it like this. So dash dash style sheet, uh, specify the uh, file name. And then this is the original uh, document and this is with the changed uh, style sheet. So you can see that section uh, titles have been 
uh, have received a different color. The numbering has changed to using num uh, Roman numerals. Uh, and also this uh, title has changed and using uh, A, B, C for the section titles, uh, section numbers. And you can also see that the font has changed uh, because we set the variable uh, not only in the base, in the body paragraphs, but also in the table. <coughs> Finally, we can also customize the look of the output uh, document by using document templates. Uh, these determine which parts are part of a document. So typically there's a title page, front matter with table of contents and possibly other uh, things. Then the actual contents of the document and finally back matter with an index. So this is defined by the template. And for each document uh, part, there's also a page template provided. And this can be configured. So for example, margins can be set, the number of columns, the spacing between columns, and which text to place in the header and the footer uh, fields, for example. Uh, and besides the configuration of page templates, page templates, you can also configure certain aspects of the uh, document uh, parts. So here's an example. Um, so we configure the article template, which is part of uh, the Hynotype distribution. Uh, we specify which parts to include in the output. So here it omits the front and back matter, so only uh, leaves the title and the contents parts. You can also specify which uh, style sheet to use. Uh, you can specify which language to use for uh, typical titles, such as the uh, table of contents or the index. Uh, and we can also, for the article, uh, template as a special option uh, which allows you to select where to display the abstract on the title page uh, or uh, later in the document. We can also override the titles for sections, so the language already sets these for each language, uh, but you can still override them like this. So for the table of contents, you can manually give a string. Again, you can work with variables. Uh, the paper size variable is used in the page templates, so this will change the page all over the document. And this corresponds to the title part, and so you can set the page number format using lowercase no, uh, Roman numerals in this case, and at which page to end the part. So this make sure that the next uh, part uh, starts on the right hand uh, page. And for the title page um, template, you can set the margins. For example, top margin is changed here. And you can even set the uh, background using this PDF uh, image. Uh, and we can set the scale option to fill or fit the page, for example. So this is an example of a uh, uh, style for the Rhinotype manual I've been working on. And it shows what is possible. So using. Uh, uh, margins and indentation uh, in a smart way you can obtain this kind of result. Uh, it also changes the link color etc and uh, this is using a background for the title uh, to make it a little bit more uh, more nice. And this is then a page spread with a left page and a right page so it changes the uh, footers uh, separately for the left and the right hand uh, pages to obtain uh, this result. Now all of these um, uh, things like style sheets and document templates, they are uh, handled similarly by Rhinotype. They are called resources and they can be uh, retrieved by name, so uh, by entry point. So these can be provided in separate packages on PyPI uh, and then used in, in documents by just referring to them uh, by name. You can find out which of them are installed by using the appropriate uh, list options. Uh, also, the front ends uh, are handled in this way. So in the future, I hope to enable uh, to automatically install fonts, for example, from PyPI uh, when it's being used by documents. So you don't have to manually install it uh, when you retrieve a document and uh, render it. So that's it. Some more uh, references uh, and contact information. Do we have still time for questions? A couple of, a couple of questions.
No, that is uh, not supported at this moment. No. It's uh, the PDF uh, backend is as simple as possible at this moment to make uh, this possible. Is there a simple way to support the data packages? No, no. But there, there is a that would be a fun project perhaps. There's a LaTeX parser for Python, only 2.7. You could use it to write the front end for a Rhino type. And it, it, I think it even uh, like evaluates uh, tech code, so perhaps it's pretty powerful. Yes. Sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, yes, you can you can set the uh, alignment of images uh, using the the style sheet. Yes. It does handle Unicode, but it's not been properly tested with uh, other scripts yet. But uh, that's why I wrote it in Python three, so that internally it's all Unicode, so that. Yeah, yeah. Right left. Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah, right to left is not yet. Uh, Supported, but uh, Unicode it should handle. Yes. Uh, it does, depending on if the custom directive directive expands to known uh, directive. You don't have to change anything in Rhinotype, but you can also, uh, for example, create a specific flowable that uh, renders your uh, custom directive. Yes. Uh, how difficult is it to implement another front-end? I'm thinking, for example, textile. Uh, it should not be too difficult. Each, uh, it, it starts from a document tree in which each node uh, has a name, and this is mapped to a um, Python class. And uh, so in this class, you implement uh, the, the mapping to the internal representation. Um, so with Sphinx, you Sphinx kind of handles this for restructured text, uh, but for other formats like the, the basic restructured text front end, um, it's not not possible to to pass it to two documents and it will not concatenate. It. That's not supported now. Okay, that's it. I think. Thank you.